We're here joining you again live from the Edmonton Region Hydrogen Hub Pavilion inside the Canadian Hydrogen Convention. This is part of our exhibit or our pavilion space. It's pretty cool. So Brent, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, this is great. Okay, so uh, there's a million things we can talk about. Uh, let's just maybe talk a little bit before we get into your real questions. Uh, Lindy made an announcement this morning. Uh, it's, they haven't talked dollar values yet, but we know it's gonna be one of, if not the largest net zero hydrogen projects in the world. Yeah. Uh, can you just talk a little bit of what's happening inside the Edmonton region in hydrogen right now? Sure, I mean, that's a great example of the types of investments we're seeing in the Edmonton region. You know, we've had announcements over the past several years as companies look to decarbonize their operations. They really need hydrogen. They need uh, net zero, yeah, low carbon, right there. low carbon hydrogen. So, you know, combined with the availability of our low cost natural gas, our carbon capture and storage, new CO2 hubs that are moving into the system, into the region and going through the approval process really means this is the place for these types of projects. So when Dow talks about you know, decarbonizing its global fleet of, of polyethylene facilities, largely through this one facility right in Fort Saskatchewan. So we're seeing more of these, seeing companies like Linde providing the hydrogen to these facilities, world leaders choosing Edmonton as the location for hydrogen production. And of course, we're also looking at the hydrogen end use and uh, happy to talk more about that and some of our supply chain activities. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's a great overview. And I'll, I'll just highlight that our, our, our colleagues and friends at Alberta's Industrial Heartland Association, worked really closely with Lindy on that project. Uh, and it's part of Dow's net zero ethylene polyethylene right. facility. That's a $10 billion project right. on its own before even adding this Lindy project. So when we look at, at that, those two projects, we look at the Lehigh Heidelberg announcement just two weeks ago of a $1.4 billion net zero cement plant. We've got Air Products, with right now the world's largest net zero hydrogen facility being built here. Those are just a handful of the projects that are on the go. How do we, and I know you're working on this, how do we map the supply chain of this? You know, how do we make sure we've got enough people that are part of this? Can you just talk a bit about, again, maybe yeah. that supply chain mapping project? Yeah, exactly. When we talk about you know, investable projects, you need to have components that make these projects investable. So some yeah. of those are what we call the supply chain. So we've been doing a lot of work over the past year or so to really understand, you know, how can we make sure we have the companies in the Edmonton region, in Alberta, even in Western Canada, that can support all of these new hydrogen projects, really and across the entire hydrogen value chain. Yeah, construction projects, we need to make sure we have the workforce available for that. We need other companies that can provide some of the goods uh, into these new projects. Again, 40, 30 to $40 billion worth of projects. So we want to get as much economic value out of these yeah. projects as we can. So what we've been doing is trying to better understand who are the companies we already have in our supply mm. chain. Maybe traditionally the oil and gas sector, supply chain companies that support oil and gas, but as now we move into the hydrogen economy, or is it the same companies? Do they need to make some modifications to their own business models to pivot? So we're really launching a, a whole new initiative around the hydrogen supply chain to map who are these companies. Again, everything from a construction company all the way through to who's gonna maintain a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle once those get on the road making sure uh, we've got programming to support those companies as they do make the pivot. How do they need to change their own business models potentially? Yeah. Working with the Mount Royal team on that. And then also the workforce. Do we have the right skill sets for this growth that we're going to see? So one of the first projects that's been launching is the Hydrogen Supply Chain Initiative. Uh, we're working closely with NGen Canada. They're part of the Advanced Manufacturing Supercluster. And they've been doing this work in other supply chain opportunities like battery electric, for example. So using proven methodology that we can use in the Edmonton region to better understand who are the companies that can really benefit uh, and contribute to this huge hydrogen opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll just kind of emphasize the point you're making, that we're trying to make this transition happen as quickly as possible. Yeah. So the more we can simplify uh, and de-risk for people, you know, the, the faster we can move. So it really is about how do we collaborate across industry, government, you know, not-for-profits, everybody who's got a stake in this. And you know, we, we talk about that Dow project. Uh, we talk about you know the Air Products product. Those two together need almost 10,000 construction workers. You know, Lindy's probably going to need you know 2,500 to 3,000 to build that. So we don't want our people to be you know what holds us back that not having enough, exactly. or not having the skills in place. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, exactly right. So, you know, we're trying to get more quantifiable data so we can actually go out and talk with our post-secondary institutes, other training providers to say, here's the gaps that we think we have today. We're going to see potentially uh, opportunities in the next 10 years. So how do we plan now for these, uh, these new, the new workforce? It could be new students coming out of our high schools into post-secondaries, into the polytechs. Or it could be the existing workers, you know, coming out of the traditional oil and gas sector that want to be part of this hydrogen opportunity. So providing them the tools that they need as well. So we've got strong support from governments across the provincial government, the federal government, municipal governments to all, you know, really make sure we're organized around this opportunity because we, we, it is a race. We need to make sure yeah. we've got the right talent in place to attract these major projects to the region. Yeah, and I think, you know, when we talk about, if you're not in the industry, you probably don't think about what does it actually take to pull these off? So a facility doesn't just happen. You need a whole supply chain to help build on the production side. So you need, you need the pumps and the valves and the switches and the monitoring and the, you know, the, the different types of materials that you can actually build the pieces out of. You need all the carbon sequestration to go with yep. it. You know, the whole supply chain all the way through, exactly. it's super complex and it's, it's all pretty much new. It's, it's new, but I think, again, we can build off of the experience we have. We think of these industrial parks, uh, not only the Alberta Industrial Heartland, yep. think of the, the NISCU Industrial Park on the south side of the Edmonton region. Right. All this capability that's been supporting our sector since 1947 when Leduc Number 1 came underway. So how do these, these, these companies, this infrastructure, these capabilities start to contribute to more towards the hydrogen opportunities? So when we have companies coming into Edmonton really wanting to understand more how we can uh, you know, work with them to advance their own technologies, then they start saying, oh yeah, but we have to scale up our technology. So maybe doing that scale up of the production of the equipment that you're going to be needing can take place here. So much more awareness now of what we can bring to the table, just like we've done in the past historically, we can do it again. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating. And so again, Brent, like you're at, you're at the center point of all of these things happening. Um, later this morning, we're going to be launching the 5,000 vehicle challenge, which we're not going to do too much to preview on. That, that's this afternoon. Make sure you tune in. Uh, there's so many initiatives happening. One of the ones that you, you touched on that maybe I'll ask you to just to go a little bit deeper on is the Mount Royal project. Sure. So can you explain that? Because I think that, again, that fits into this whole supply chain mapping. Yeah, so that's one of the key components of our supply chain mapping. It's working closely with the Mount Royal University team. They have a proven model. Uh, to really help existing companies that already have revenue streams make some pivots into new innovative areas. So we've identified hydrogen as a really important area for that proven model to be deployed. So working closely with the Mount Royal team to engage companies in the Edmonton region, in Calgary, across the whole province to begin to thinking about how they can participate in a, a, a training cohort to really understand how their whole business leadership can make this pivot towards hydrogen. So again, we've been doing this in other areas and now we think this hydrogen alone is a significant opportunity that we yeah. need to bring all these, uh, these organizations together and learn from each other. I think that's the real key part is through these cohorts, they can learn from each other. Some have already been going through the programming at Mount Royal. Some are just beginning to do that uh, with this new first cohort that will be launched in May. Okay, fantastic. We only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, again, we've got 8,000 people here from around the world. I think we've got 40 international delegations at least. Uh, we've already had the first you know, multi-billion dollar announcement this morning. Uh, is there anything that you're really paying attention to uh, the next couple of days as part of this show? Oh, we're trying to pay attention to everything, but there's so much going on. But, you know, I'll come back to some of the, the work we're doing to really show how we can benefit from this hydrogen opportunity, not only in uh, being able to produce large amounts of hydrogen, but again, other components of it, some of those manufacturing opportunities that we can have right here. So really watching closely, we're going to talk more on transportation and mobility. That's been the focus for the Edmonton Region Hydrogen yeah. Hub, I'd say, over the past year, is mobility and the heavy-duty transportation sector. So that's an ex excellent example of supply chains that need to be in place if we're going to work with trucking companies, we're going to work with some of the manufacturers of the equipment, the OEMs that want to bring technologies into this market. So when we start to talk about what we're doing in the Edmonton region, we're on their radar now. So this event is really great for that. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Brent. Thank really, you, again, love the work you're doing. It's, it's really, we're super lucky to have Brent as part of the team and leading this hydrogen initiative, not just for Edmonton Global, but really for the entire region. And there's amazing things happening. So thanks so much, Brent. Thanks, Chris.